Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Well, I have written a book called Get Your Hopes Up. You know, there's so many wonderful things that we can say about hope. But one of the things that I have discovered, and I wrote a chapter in the book about this, is the energy of hope. Yeah, I've actually found that when I'm hopeful, really aggressively expecting something good to happen in my life, that it actually gives me physical energy. You know, our thoughts are tied to our emotions and our words and our actions, and I believe our energy levels. I think that when we think negative things and downtrodden things, that they're energy draining thoughts. But when we think hopeful things, I believe they're energy producing thoughts. You know, there's an awful lot of people in the world that are tired. I mean, like really tired, and people that are exhausted all the time. And of course, this is not always the case with everybody, but I wonder how many of those people maybe just really think a lot of negative thoughts. And maybe because they've had a lot of negative things happen in their life, But you know, one of the things I've found is that no matter what's happened in my past, my past does not have to dictate my future. I can on purpose be full of hope and believe that something good is going to happen in my life. The Bible tells us to put our expectation in God, expect God. That's actually what it means to wait on God. Several places in the Bible, especially in the Amplified Bible, where it says to wait on God, it says to expect God. God, to look and long for God. So let me ask you a question. What are you expecting God to do for you today? If you're full of real happy expectation, full of hope, I bet you're going to have more energy today than you would if you were not full of hope. So why don't you just try it and see? I want to talk to you this morning. I'm titling the message Lies That You Might Believe. But I'm actually going to talk to you about deception. It's a very important subject because Jesus told us that in the last days, deception would greatly increase. And we're actually taught in the Word of God to pray that we will not be deceived. And I don't know how many of you do that, but I do it, not every day, but Fairly often, I will pray, God, help me not to be deceived. And if I am deceived in any area, please show it to me. So that's going to be the first thing you want to get out of this, is you want to start praying on some kind of a regular basis. God, if I'm deceived about anything in my life, then please show it to me. Deception is a huge problem because it means that we're believing a lie. That's what it means to be deceived. You believe something that's just not true. But it becomes true for you or true for me because I believe it. It's just, just imagine how people are going to believe who all their lives believed there was no God and then find out there was. That's going to be disappointing, isn't it? <laughs> But the thing is, is if I believe a lie, then it makes it true for me, even though it's not true at all. The devil is a liar, he's the father of lies. He cannot tell the truth. The Bible says the truth is not in him. But Jesus, of course, is just the exact opposite. And he gave us his word, and he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Sometimes people say, well, what is truth? Well, it's right here. And I know people want to say, oh, don't tell me that all the truth is in that one book. Well, I'll tell you, it works for me. And I would say that the condition of the world today and the way people's lives are going and the way society's going, I mean, man, why not just try something that might work? I tell people, I say in my sermon sometimes, you know, if I believe in God all my life and I, I spend my whole life believing this and I come to the end and find out, oh, man, I was wrong. Well, they're just, I just believed a lie all my life. At least I've still been happy. You know, but if you don't believe in God <laughs> and you come to the end of your life and you're wrong, <laughs> yeah, it hasn't cost me anything. <laughs> I mean, I was still happy, but you might have thought you were happy during your life, but boy, you're going to sure be disappointed in the end. 
So no matter what somebody else has told you, why don't you read the book for yourself? We have a testimony from a man that was a Jewish man and he went into a Barnes and Noble bookstore and uh, he saw my book, Battlefield of the Mind, and just kind of like started making fun of me. Like, who does she think she is? And uh, he opened up the book just randomly and the page he opened to basically said, I, I can't remember the exact words. It's better than what I'm even going to tell you, but it was like, you know, I, I've been looking for you and waiting for you, and you've been looking for answers, and, and he was just like. <laughs> so he, he, he bought the book secretly, snuck it home because he didn't want his Jewish wife to think that he was reading a book by this Christian woman. So he kept hearing me talk about the Amplified Bible, so he went out and he snuck one of those and brought it home and started getting more and more convinced as he read the word that there was something about all this Jesus stuff. Well, come to find out, his wife was also sneaking around and reading the Bible. <laughs> so long story short, him and his wife and all their kids got saved. He said it was just like Jesus said, you know. But then his Jewish mother who, and you know, the older you get sometimes, the more you get set in your ways and the less likely you're gonna be to change. And she was just like, no way, no how. She was in a nursing home and she's coming close to the end of her life. And so he finally left her with a Bible and said, you know, please read it, you'll, you'll see the truth. So after a while, and this, I just thought this was so sweet. Long story short, she ended up giving her life to Christ too, but she said, you know what? She said, the Messiah that we've been waiting for, he's, he was in here all the time. Isn't that sweet? And, and here's the thing. Maybe, maybe what you've been waiting for, maybe what you've been looking for, maybe the peace that you need, the joy that you need, maybe the, the, the love that you're looking for, you might just find it in here too. Amen? So why not give God's word a try? This is the only truth that I know of that is working in people's lives. I mean, across language barriers, across lands, it's always interesting to me to go to some foreign land where I can't even speak their language, and it's the same spirit, the same Jesus, the same God doing the same things everywhere. And that's not something that we could make up. But in Matthew chapter 24, which is a chapter that shows a lot of the signs of end times, we are particularly encouraged to not come into deception and to pray against deception. And so we have to realize that there's many things happening out in the world today that people are saying are truth and reality, and they're just absolutely not. So there's many different kinds of deception that the Bible talks about. It mentions self-deception. We're going to talk about that today. It talks about the deception of reasoning. It talks about the deception of sin, how attractive sin can, can look and what it does to you. One of the most deceptive things in the world. It talks about the deception of riches. There's all kinds of different deception in the world. And it's things that cry out, I'm your answer. I'm what you need. And yet they end up destroying you. Often today, what God calls sin, the world calls addiction, disease, or genetic formatting. Sometimes we even call it modern times. It's okay today for people to live together and not be married. Might as well try it out before you sign on the dotted line because after all, this is the year 2015. Well, you know, anybody with any common sense at all knows that God has not gone and got so-called modern on us. <laughs> you know, he's been modern all along. And what he says is true is not only true for like, when, when I was a teenager, but it's true for teenagers today and will be true for teenagers later on and later on and later on and later on. 
And it's getting scary to watch how fast things are declining. And you know, we cannot always change everybody else's mind, but if, if Christians, the thing that concerns me is the compromise among Christians. Come on. And if we will just get out in the world and be what we're supposed to be, our lives will become a sermon and there will be such a difference in the way that our lives are than other people's that people are gonna want to know about Christ. But if we're no different than any of them, then what, what's to want? You know, there's no reason to want any of that. And so we really need to make sure that we are not living these deceived lives. Now, let's talk about some lies that I believed in my life. I believe that I was flawed because I had an abusive childhood and that I would always be flawed, that I would always have a second-rate life and I would just have to settle for that. Well, I found out in here that was a lie. Maybe you're here today and you've made a lot of mistakes and the devil's been telling you, well, it's too late for you. I mean, you might still go to heaven, but you can forget any kind of a victorious life. You can forget your ministry. You can, you know, forget really having the things that you thought you once could have. That's a lie. That's a lie. I wonder how many lies people believe in this place today. <laughs> I just wonder how much, see, the, the, the problem with deception is you don't know you're deceived. <laughs> and so it's like, well, no, I, I don't believe lies. Well, I'm telling you that I did. One of the lies that I believed, as messed up as I was, I believed I was right about everything. <laughs> and I was very happy to tell everybody what was wrong with them. And I was very happy to make a huge effort to change them. And I was totally deceived. I did not know what a miserable, wretched mess that I was. Oh, God, you got to change Dave. Oh, God, you got to change Dave. God, you got to change Dave. And I was shocked one day when the Lord spoke to me while I was praying. Who would expect God to speak to them while they're praying? And he said, Dave is not the problem. And I thought, well, then who is? There's only me and him. It cannot be me. I mean, seriously, how much are you finding wrong with the other people in your life? Not this section? Okay, what about over here? And the devil loves that because if he can keep us busy finding things wrong with everybody else, then we never can be confronted by the truth about ourselves and we just go our whole lives judging and criticizing and living this fantasy that there's no problem with us. And I don't care if there's a thousand things wrong with the person you're married to, you are not going to change them, but God can change you if you'll let him change you. And he can change you so much that you won't even care what's wrong with him. Yeah. I mean, Dave still does stuff that used to drive me nuts, and now I just couldn't care less. Doesn't bother me at all. Doesn't upset me. I don't think anything about it. And I stayed mad for years over stuff that he still does. He didn't change, but God changed me. But he won't change you until you're willing to say, God, I don't want to be deceived. Show me truth. Help me face truth. So I believed all kinds of things that weren't true. That's why the Bible says in Romans 12 that we are to renew our minds according to the word of God. So much deception in the world. Just crazy stuff. Stuff that don't even make any sense. One, that one thing that I read said self-deceit Self-deceit is said to be a sin against common sense. <laughs> Remember last night I said, you know, in the last 10 years or so, I've just come to the conclusion, you know, if what I'm doing is not working, then why just keep doing it? You know, if I'm mad at people all the time that have hurt me and it's not changing them at all, it's just making me miserable, then why stay mad? If I'm worrying all the time and it's not changing my problems, it's just giving me ulcers and headaches, then why keep doing it? Why can't we just have a little sanctified common sense? You know what? We really don't have to be a rocket scientist 
This is so practical. The Word of God is so practical and so applicable to our everyday life. If you want people to like you, be nice. <laughs> That's not hard. <laughs> I mean, really, if you want people to like you, just figure this out today. You can't have your way all the time. Sometimes you're going to have to let them have their way. Then they're going to like you better. You watch these ads on TV, and they have this pill that you can take, and you can buy a bottle for $59.95, and if you buy it today, you'll get a bottle free, plus they'll send you one to your friends and all this stuff. And this thing does something inside your body, and the fat just melts off of you, and, and you don't have to change one thing about your eating. And they sell millions of dollars worth of that stuff. And here I am, 40 years preaching the truth, and people don't even want to send an offering. <laughs> because I'm not going to tell you that I can melt your meanness away or wave my magic Bible over your head and make you nice. I'm going to tell you that you're going to have to die to self and God's going to crucify your flesh. <laughs> and he's going to change you into his image and it's not going to be overnight. It's going to take time, but it is the absolute most amazing, most fantastic, interesting journey that anybody can ever take in their life. I mean, I think so so much now, and I want to try to write a book on this sometime before the Lord's done with me here, just about my journey. Oh, my gosh. When I think about where I started from and how stupid I was and the stuff that I believed and the way I acted and how I treated people and what God has taught me from this one little book. You're going to have to excuse me, but I just love, love, love my Bible. I love it. I love it. I like nature programs. I was watching a nature program the other night, and they had these two baboons that had formed a close relationship. And, you know, I mean, they're so ugly, they're cute. I mean, they just like... My gosh, God has got a real sense of humor. <laughs> and I thought this show was going pretty good till they started telling me that they were my closest cousin. <laughs> now, these are, your, these are your closest cousins, and, you know, you've, uh, you've evolved from them. Well, you know, he, here's the problem I have with that, and nobody's been able to explain it. If, if we evolved from an ape, then why are there still apes? Did they just miss the evolving program and they didn't, they didn't get to go on? I mean, I don't get that. Like, well, you got left out because you still look like an ape to me. But look at how I've improved. <laughs> And you know who came up with that theory? An expert. <laughs> I want to tell you what, the wisdom of God that you can have without one thimble full of education, the wisdom of God is greater than all the philosophies of all the men on earth. Common sense. It's, it's no wonder that the devil wants people to think that they came from an ape. I mean, why not act like an animal if that's where you came from? If you can't believe that you're special, then you're never going to act special. But to believe that you're created in the image of God and that he has a plan for your life, and that he created you with his own hand in your mother's womb, and he loves you, and he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now that's something to believe in. That's something that's going to make your life amazing. Amen.
And now I'm way off track and I've lost my place. And <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'll, I believe that God loved me more when I was good than he did when I wasn't good. And boy, that was a lie. See, love is not something God does that we earn. Love is who God is. He is love. I believe that I was spiritual. I did. I went to church every week. I was on the church board. Now, let me tell you, when you are on the board, oh, buddy, you are spiritual now. You're one of the elite at the church. We were tithers. Our kids went to Christian schools. I thought I was religious and spiritual until I read James 1, 26 and 27. You do want me to read it to you, right? <laughs> if anyone thinks himself to be religious, <laughs> obviously observant of the external duties of his faith and does not bridle his tongue. Well, I wasn't much into that. But he deludes his own heart. He is self-deceived. He deludes his own heart. That person's religious service is worthless, futile, and barren. External religious worship, religion as it is expressed in outward acts that is pure and unblemished in the sight of God is this. Visit, help, and care for orphans and widows in their affliction and need and keep yourself unspotted and uncontaminated from the world. So, you see, here's true spirituality. Bridle your tongue. <laughs> help the poor. Oh. Uh, Well, I go to church. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand, but we, we make too much out of that one weekly, one hour, and we think that's all there is to it. And Jesus offers us a life, Amen. a lifestyle. We need to do life with God from the morning, that when, when we open our eyes in the morning until we close them at night, it's about God. And I don't care if people think I'm radical or over the top or over the edge. If you put God first in your life, everything else falls in place. But I remember how deceived I was. And what a hot shot I thought I was in that church because I knew all the right people. There was no party that I wasn't invited to. Dave was an elder. I was on the church board. And I was a mess and didn't know it. I thought everybody else had a problem. And we would, we would just, it was a regular habit. After church on Sunday, several of us would go to lunch and we would just tear everybody up in that church. <laughs> tear them up. Hi, guys. How y'all doing? Now, see, I only do this because I've been there, done that. <laughs> you, we're not going to be happy doing that. We're not. The only way we're ever going to be really happy is to do it God's way. And the only reason why people today or whatever generation it is try to say there's no God and they want to be an atheist. I'll tell you, every so-called atheist would get saved immediately if they thought they can have the benefits without having to come under any kind of leadership from God. <laughs> what they want is to do their own thing. They are deceived by the deceitfulness of sin. I want to know if I'm doing it right. I, I want to, and not because I think I have to do that, but I think that's one of the ways that we can honor God. God, I don't want to be deceived. Teach me truth.
Well, I sure hope that today's teaching has given you a better understanding of how God's truth defeats every lie the enemy would like for you to believe about yourself and your life. Let's remember John 8, 31 and 32. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm always amazed when we come to a medical clinic that we can come out to a, a field or something that there's absolutely nothing and it becomes a well-oiled machine of, of medical care. How long have we been doing this? Uh, this is our 100th outreach. That's and, awesome. And uh, I want to see it's close to 10 or 11 years. Walk us through how this process works for your team. Yeah. Patients, they come in and uh, they, they wait in line. Um, from there, they'll go in and wait some temps and see a, see a nurse for, for triage where they'll ask their primary chief complaint. Um, what's the one main reason that you're here? How, how can we help you? From there, they're afforded the opportunity to either see a doctor or a dentist completely free of charge. Um, from a doctor, we ask every single patient that comes in, uh, can we pray for you? And then from there, once they exit, they come here and they receive uh, free medicine. Describe for someone watching at home what you see out here on a regular basis. What is it like? Some have the same our patients at home have, but we also have rare diseases we don't see in, uh, in Europe. And uh, I also have the experience that the patients here are very um, humble, they are very thankful, and um, they, they have the hope that you bring them some help. Uh, there was a man who was coming because he said he cannot see properly. So um, we tried glasses, and I really uh, loved this moment when he put on the glasses, and I could see that he gets really happy, and then he just said, I can read. And I was like, just didn't want to freak out totally, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to stay professional, yes. and yet you're yes. so excited for yes. what's happening. That's awesome. Yeah. Are people impacted for Christ through what you're doing here? Yes, I think so, because um, I do that because I love Jesus. I think they feel it, and yeah, sometimes we just pray right at the investigation table <laughs> just to make them know that Jesus is the doctor all above us. Yeah. Here at the medical clinic, we are seeing many people getting help that they've needed for a long time, and our wonderful volunteers here, they work so hard, and we're just so grateful for all of you that make this possible. So right now, let me just ask you, to be a part of everything that we're doing. Your special gift today can help lives in ways that you can never imagine. <laughs> Together, we can make a big, big difference. So call us right now, go to the website, joycemeyer.org, and give a special gift today that will help people, not only here in Africa, but all over the world. Al gezien, frisse impulsen. Nu bij Joyce Meyer Nederlands op Facebook.